one year after the tsunami of December 2004. People commemorate the anniversary of the day their lives changed and remember those who lost their lives. Beginning with the initial response in the wake of the tsunami, when many organizations and individuals stepped in and offered their help in relief and rehabilitation, there was no shortage of interventions and initiatives to assist the people as they embarked on a journey of recovery. But what the relief and rehabilitation response clearly demonstrated is that genuine efforts to help do not always bring about the desired results. Good intentions need to be backed by proper long-term planning. Planning that takes into consideration the real needs and challenges faced by people in rebuilding their lives. Less than a year after the tsunami, there are already examples of the outcome of bad planning and quality control. Mistakes that could have easily been avoided. The experience of practical action and partners in South Asia has resulted in a call for change in the policies and processes of disaster management. This change places livelihood issues at the center of disaster management programs. The disaster resistant sustainable livelihood approach that we promote uh, is community specific, location specific and hazard specific. It uh, looks at the, the resource base, both physical and social resources, as well as infrastructure. It also takes the social dynamics into account, which, uh, which means that uh, power structures and gender issues will, will be taken into account. And it actually opens avenues to um, uh, expand the resource base, or rather asset base of the, the affected communities and um, uh, diversify livelihoods op livelihood options, uh, which means that it will, at the end of the day, uh, will uh, lead to uh, reducing uh, risk, uh, vulnerability, and uh, increasing resilience and poverty reduction. The Disaster Resistance Sustainable Livelihoods Framework recognizes that assets, natural, physical, financial, social, and human, are the foundations of livelihoods. The poorest people, those who have minimal assets, become especially vulnerable at times of disaster. Through this uh, exercise, ITDG main focus is uh, to sensitive to the disaster and say, at the same time the, uh, the natural resource management. Is, those are the main focus areas in this particular exercise. The setting up of rural business incubation centers are helping people develop business plans. But there were many things that had to happen to make this possible. The first of these was damage assessment, which included collecting first-hand information related to previous livelihood activities. Tsunami Tamangi <laughs> The next and second step was to have discussions with local government officials such as Grama Sevakas, district and divisional secretaries 
as well as NGOs working in the area about project objectives and to seek their help to facilitate the process. The third stage of the process involved public meetings and programs to help people understand the objective of this initiative. At meetings like this one, communities are made aware of business and technological opportunities they could make use of to enhance their incomes. The fourth step of the process is to talk to those who wish to join the livelihood program individually those who show initiative and entrepreneurial qualities and those who will benefit from vocational training are identified and categorized accordingly. Prioritization then happens together with the community. In the next and fifth stage of the process, business ideas generation workshops are held to motivate people to think positively and take advantage of business opportunities. This is followed by individual assessments of their skills and abilities and the viability of the proposed business venture. The sixth stage is the setting up of rural business incubation centers. The whole idea behind setting up these centers is to allow coordination between the many organizations that have planned to or are interested in working with that particular community. The centers, managed by the community, thus coordinates resources and attempts to provide basic infrastructure, conducts training programs, helps people develop business plans and assess their feasibility, creates market links and accesses outside resources. The RBICs are managed by committees formed by local communities. The center's manager is a community member, chosen for his or her commitment and management skills. An enabling environment is essential to turn assets into livelihoods. This is particularly true when disasters happen. Four enabling factors have been identified. Disaster-resistant physical and social infrastructure. Social infrastructure includes knowledge sharing, access to productive resources, and marketing and social networks. Community institutions, both formal and informal, that articulate common interests and demand accountability. Responsive governance that is sensitive to community needs and rights. And, not least, socially responsible markets. The benefits of the post-disaster livelihoods development approach are many. Participants can contribute their ideas openly and freely. People have a comprehensive picture of the current situation. Motivation, confidence and mutual respect is built among all stakeholders. A sense of joint ownership is created. There are, however, some challenges to be met. Collaborative processes take time to yield results. 
It takes skill to facilitate a process where everyone's views are heard and outcomes negotiated. Process facilitators must display an unbiased attitude and willingness to challenge existing power structures. The Disaster Resistance Sustainable Livelihoods Framework, developed based on experiences in 11 locations in South Asia, makes a powerful case. Changes in policy and governance are necessary for the application of this approach on a wider scale. Practical Action believes that these key aspects are important when rebuilding livelihoods in post-disaster situations to make communities more resilient. Practical Action is eager to share its experience and knowledge. We welcome your inquiries.